Hi, today we're covering a rather sad story, which still has a glimmer of hope at the end. This is a story of Oakley Carlson, who was born on December 6, 2016, to Jordan Bowers and Andrew Carlson. The family lived in Oakville, Washington, on a massive 300-acre property owned by Andrew's parents, Kate and Fred Carlson. This was just one of the many properties Oakley had a half-brother and an older sister. Then later on, a baby brother would join the family. At one point, Andrew Carlson was a police officer. Unfortunately, things took a sharp turn and he was, well, let's say let go from the force due to some claims filed on his behalf. Though it's heavily rumored that some heavy drug use might have played a part in his departure from the police force. And this is partly because Jordan and Andrew would later get into trouble for methamphetamine possession not long after this. So in essence, the start of Oakley's life was rather rough to say the least. In her first year, she was taken away from her parents and her siblings siblings, then placed into state custody, which, while a slight improvement, it's not exactly the warm, loving beginning any child deserves. But there was a ray of hope, a bright spot in this bleak situation, and it came in the form of a family, the Hiles, who were eager to provide a loving home to this unfortunate child. It would be in July 2017 when Jamie Jo Hiles first heard Oakley's story. Jamie, Jo, and her husband, Eric, had struggled with fertility issues and had been considering adoption for a rather prolonged period. When Oakley's name came up, Jamie Jo had a feeling that maybe, just maybe, this little girl could be the missing part of their family. At the time, they had a big anniversary trip, Las Vegas, already planned. So they took off, excited but anxious, to get back and learn more about Oakley. When they returned, they found out that Oakley was already placed with another family, but it wasn't quite working out. The foster mother was a nurse and worked long overnight shifts, quickly realizing that juggling both her foster child and a demanding job was more than she could handle at the time. That's when she offered the Hiles to take a chance to take over parenting the child. Over the next few weeks, Oakley split her time between her current foster home and the Hiles house to ease with the transition process. On September 22, 2017, Oakley officially moved in with the Hiles in the more permanent form. And from the start, it was rather clear to most who saw her that she fit right in with the family. The bond between Oakley and her new family quickly grew stronger day by day. And for a brief moment, it seemed like things were finally looking up for the little girl. As time went on in the Hills home, Oakley quickly became the center of their world. They were absolutely smitten with the girl. Their lives now revolved around her and her happiness. And by all accounts, Oakley thrived in the attention. She adapted faster than most anyone had expected, fitting right in like she had always been a part of their family. Most accounts state that Oakley had a rather infectious personality, cracking what they considered jokes, saying the goofiest things, anything to get a small laugh. She loved nothing more than making people smile, to the point that many thought she was a little comedian in the making. Whether she was dressed up in her favorite costumes like Mary Poppins, or just being a silly little kid, she made sure she was a center of attention in a positive way. The kid was essentially a natural born entertainer. On top of that, Oakley was right on track for her age when it came to learning. It seems the child had a love for books and reading with her foster parents became one of her favorite activities. Brown Bear, Brown Bear was a staple along with Have Loved You Since Forever, a book that apparently she and Jamie Jo would often read together. In fact, the second title became something of a mantra between the two of them. Records show that every day they would repeat to each other, I have loved you since forever. In 2017 and 2018, Jamie Jo and Eric fully believed they would be able to finish the adoption processes and officially adopt Oakley. They couldn't wait to make her an official part of their family. She already felt like she had always been their daughter, so it was just supposed to be a formality. But then, in the summer of 2019, they got news that would completely blindside them. Oakley's future and theirs was about to change in a way that they had never expected. The state informed them that Oakley was going to start the reunification process with her biological parents, Jordan and Andrew Carlson. Not just Oakley either, 
but all the Carlson kids were being sent back around at the same time, and to them it felt like a gut punch from hell. Jamie, Joe, and Eric were devastated. Oakley had become a huge part of their lives. What were they supposed to do without her? Meanwhile, Oakley started having visits with Jordan and Andrew. And can you imagine how hard that was for Jamie, Joe, and Eric? Watching the little girl that they loved slowly being taken away? But in the end, it would only be that much worse. The reasoning behind this sudden decision was, well, Jordan was pregnant, and because of that, she had been apparently staying clean, as she had also completed the requisite parenting classes. And to make things seem worse, it seems that a significant part of the reason that they were able to move on how they were was that a social worker by the name of Angela Fries hadn't filed the proper paperwork regarding Oakley's foster care, which, as far as the law believed, meant that Oakley had only been in foster care for a day instead of two years, and that she had only actually spent a day with the Hiles. And just like that, Oakley's future got a reset. On November 29th, 2019, the day after Thanksgiving, Jamie, Joe, Eric, and Oakley spent their last morning together. As they attempted to make their last morning memorable together, rather than show her how heartbroken they were, knowing that they might not get to see her ever again until she turned 18. That afternoon, a social worker came, and just like that, Oakley was driven away, leaving the Hiles behind, staring down a future they never saw coming. Once Oakley was back in the care of Andrew and Jordan, her life would become something of a mystery. 2020 was a rough year for everyone, as, well, the sickness that shall not be named, through the world into chaos, and with all the lockdowns and restrictions, a lot of things slipped through the cracks, especially when it came to CPS, Child Protective Services, keeping tabs on the Carlson household. So no one really knows what was going on behind closed doors. And by the end of 2020, Kate and Fred Carlson, Oakley's grandparents, would finally manage to see their granddaughter for Christmas, which was a visit that would later raise many red flags as Kate had noticed that Oakley did not look well, as she seemed malnourished, sickly, and dirty. But apparently, this detail would not come to light to the public until the following year. And this was another point when adults failed this innocent child. When Jamie Jo found out about the visit, she tried to report her concerns to CPS. However, like many things in the government, it was a slog, and they didn't exactly jump into action Instead, CPS was more interested in why the grandparents themselves had not made the report, rather than addressing the issue of Oakley's condition. Jamie Jo would even urge Kate to call CPS herself, but Kate was hesitant, as the grandparents would report that they felt powerless, that they had been manipulated by Jordan and Andrew, who held all control over when and where they could see their grandkids even though Kate and Fred lived less than a mile away from the Carlson home. It seems that despite them owning the property of where they lived, they had no say in the matter, as hard as that is to believe. It must be noted that Jordan and Andrews had worked the situation to a point where the grandparents were too afraid to act, even if it meant stepping in to help their own grandkids. By November 2021, things were finally closing in on Andrew and Jordan Carlson. As it seems, they couldn't keep running from the truth, as one of the heroes of this story, Jessica Swift, the principal at the local elementary school where one of Oakley's siblings attended, became suspicious. Her child was friends with the Carlson's eldest daughter, and she had been to the Carlson's home several times, each time growing more uneasy about Oakley's whereabouts. As it all started, one day when Jessica dropped off school supplies for the family and would later come to help after a small house fire. On November 6, 2021, there had been a fire at the Carlson's house, which was put out quickly, but it wasn't immediately reported for some reason, and we're expected to believe there was no malfeasance involved in that. And what was the excuse that Andrew and Jordan gave? They claimed that they couldn't find their phones to call for help, because apparently phones are the first thing to disappear in an emergency, right? Andrew's story about the fire was even more bizarre. He told people that Oakley, a toddler, had started a fire using a lighter, something that just didn't sit right with Jessica. And to make things even worse, every time she visited, she never saw Oakley. 
and she was always told that Oakley was in timeout. Jessica's suspicion would hit its peak when she set up a playdate with a Carlson's eldest daughter. During that playdate, the truth began to unravel. The daughter told Jessica that there is no more Oakley. That was it. That was the moment that everything clicked. All the previous visits, the excuses, Oakley's absence, it all made sense now, and none of it was good. Without wasting any time, Jessica would call the police and request a welfare check on Oakley, knowing deep down that something was terribly wrong, even suspecting that she might be dead. After the police were notified on December 6th, 2021, they would track down Andrew and Jordan along with their kids, who for some reason had decided to be living out of a motel. As a fire that supposedly hadn't been enough of an issue to immediately call the authorities had caused enough damage that the home was no longer livable, especially for children. When the police knocked on the motel door, Andrew Carlson would answer. Both Andrew and Jordan immediately claimed that Oakley was staying with Andrew's parents, but that excuse fell apart almost immediately. Their behavior was notably strange, as they couldn't even provide a phone number or an address for the grandparents who they were supposedly talking about. It didn't take long for the authorities to figure out that Oakley had not been with her grandparents, and in fact, her grandparents hadn't even seen her since Christmas of the previous year, and even then, they weren't allowed to have much contact with her. Once it was clear that Andrew and Jordan were obviously lying, the police arrested them and quickly charged the couple with manslaughter. However, the district attorney quickly realized that manslaughter charges would likely not stick and that there wasn't enough evidence at that point to go on, that they needed something more concrete to hold them while investigators worked on uncovering what really happened to Oakley. Luckily, law enforcement soon discovered that Andrew and Jordan had been neglecting their oldest daughter's medication the entire time she had been returned to their care, and that was enough to charge them with parental neglect at least temporarily. But as time went on, things only got worse. When the investigators dug deeper and took hair samples from the children, the results were rather alarming. The kids tested positive for methamphetamine, and not just exposure. The levels were so high that it had looked like the children had actually been ingesting the drug. And while this was unbelievably monstrous and awful, it did give the court something solid to work with. And then Andrew and Jordan would officially be charged with child endangerment. While investigators scrambled to figure out where Oakley was, Jamie Jo got a call. They asked her a simple question. If they found Oakley, would she take her back into her home? Without hesitation, Jamie Jo answered, of course. As the investigation continued, Andrew and Jordan remained shockingly unresponsive and uncooperative. The last time they claimed to have seen Oakley was on November 30th, 2021, but they never would report her missing, which raised all kinds of red flags. And despite the authorities' renewed efforts to get them to talk, there's only so much you can squeeze the screws legally to get answers, and both parents kept silent. Andrew Carlson would eventually be convicted on child endangerment charges, receiving his sentence on March 2022. By August of the same year, he would be released, only to start living his life free. Jordan Bowers got a year and a half behind bars in April 2022. But in a strange twist, she was released in January 2023, only to be rearrested right away on fraud charges, which got her another three and a half year sentence. Which is shocking since endangering a child's life really should have you behind bars for significantly longer. The bigger, more haunting question that hangs in the air was what happened to Oakley Carlson. The last time her grandparents had seen her was on December 2020, when they had seen her look sickly and unclean, but again hadn't filed a report of their concerns. And the only other confirmed sighting of Oakley was in February 2021, though the exact source seems to be unknown and potentially unreliable. And after being told, it seems that for the entire year of 2021, CPS didn't even check up on Oakley or any of her siblings, absolutely failing in the one simple mission they have, protect children. It's tough to say how long Oakley might have gone unnoticed if Jessica Swift hadn't pieced everything together and raised the alarm. Meanwhile, the Howells' attempts to report their concerns were brushed aside by the governmental body tasked with protecting children. Now, years later, 
The question of where Oakley is and is she even alive is still unanswered, as not a single person from her biological family has come forward to provide any answers or advocate for her. Honestly, it's heartbreaking, as it seems only two people in her entire life have constantly fought for Oakley. That is Jamie Jo and Eric Hiles. From the moment Oakley entered their lives, she meant the world to them. And it's clear that they won't stop fighting for the little girl they once called their own. And it seems the Hales haven't just been fighting for Oakley, they have been raising awareness for all children who have fallen through the cracks of CPS. One of their more recent successes was organizing a book drive in Oakley's name. Their goal was originally a small sum of moving 500 books, but it seems the turnout was way beyond expectations. But unfortunately, despite how much Oakley's story has moved people, we're still no closer to finding out what actually happened to her. If you remained with me until the end, I thank you, and I do hope you stay tuned and subscribe for more content.